I happened to see this commercial for a website called protectkidsonline.org. And uh, this is just, just so you can kind of see that this is the website kind of how it looks. It's um, it forwards to this thing called design it for us, tell Congress to protect kids online. And it's in support of this legislation and it's, it's interesting. Um, so it says, just to read you a little bit of this, it says, it's been 25 years since Congress last passed legislation to protect kids online. But that can change now with two bipartisan bills advancing in the U.S. Senate, the Kids Online Safety Act, COSA, and the Children and Teens Online Privacy Protection Act, COPA. So I thought, you know, that is interesting. And then couple that with all the stuff that's going on right now in Congress where they brought out Mark Zuckerberg and uh, you know the guy from Snapchat and the guy from TikTok and screamed at him about uh, kid safety, and so I just want to show you. Um, I have a I have a couple a couple clips here of first one is of Lindsey Graham, and uh, this is just it's it's very interesting to watch Lindsey Graham when you know who he is play politics like this, but just, just watch this. This is hilarious. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Republicans will answer the call. All of us, every one of us, is ready to work with you and our Democratic colleagues on this committee to prove to the American people, while Washington is certainly broken, there's a ray of hope, and it is here. It lies with your children. After years of working on this issue with you and others, I've come to conclude the following. Social media companies, as they are currently designed and operate, are dangerous products. They're destroying lives, threatening democracy itself. These companies must be reined in, or the worst is yet to come. <clears throat> Gavin Guffey, is a representative, Republican representative, uh, from South Carolina in the Rock Hill area. To all the victims who came and showed us photos of your loved ones, don't quit. It's working. You're making a difference. Through you, we'll get to where we need to go so other people won't have to show a photo of their family. The damage to your family has been done. Hopefully we can take your pain and turn it into something positive so nobody else has to hold up a sign. <clears throat> Gavin, son, got online with the Instagram and was tricked by a group in Nigeria that put up a young lady posing to be his girlfriend. And as things go at that stage in life, he gave her some photos uh, compromising sexual photos, and it turned out that she was part of a, a extortion group in Nigeria. They threatened the young man that if you don't give us money, we're going to expose these photos. Two things about this. Number one, where are this kid's parents? Why is the kid fraternizing online with Nigerians who are asking him for sexual photos? Why aren't his parents regulating his online behavior, first of all? Second of all, I've had the same thing happen to me. I had like some ransomware people come and say they like had my computer and they had nude photos of me jerking off and they were going to post them online if I didn't give them money. And I told them to post them. I was like, hey, go for it. I'll be funny. But the point is, again, Lindsey Graham has selective outrage and this is not something that the government needs to be involved in. Compromising sexual photos and it turned out that she was part of a, a extortion group in Nigeria. They threatened the young man that if you don't give us money, we're gonna expose these. I love how it's an extortion group in Nigeria too. There's just, there's even like a racist connotation to the accusation. It's like Nigeria, bad people in Nigeria are out to get you. Most of the time they're not actually in Nigeria. They're people in the US pretending to be in Nigeria. Photos, he gave them money, but it wasn't enough. They kept threatening and he killed himself. They threatened Mr. Guffey and a son. Again, first of all, how do you let it get to that point as a parent? You're already a terrible parent. Second of all, then they threatened the son and the dad. I would have been, I would have told him to screw the hell off. I would, I would have been like, I'm coming to find you. 
I got a trace on this phone and I'm going to find you and strangle you. My son killed himself. My son wouldn't kill himself. He would probably laugh at it and tell him to post the photos too. But these are bastards by any known definition. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg. Definitely bastards. You and the companies before us. I know you don't mean to. And it's it Mark so, Zuckerberg. It's my, these people could do this on the phone. My grandpa got huckstered by some people that put a thing on his computer saying it was spyware. And then they started calling him and told him to send them, you know, they could do it on a phone. Do we need to regulate the phone? No, people need to be fucking smarter. People need to not be little bitches and, and need to like think things through clearly before like, no, this girl doesn't want to be with you, dude. You're 13 and she's in Nigeria. So Hands. You have a product. You have a product. The audience cheers. Probably because. People. Here's my theory on that. It's a lot of people from the group that's pushing this. The people clapping for Lindsey Graham are these people. The people. The people who are pushing this legislation. Anyway, let's keep watching. When we had cigarettes killing people, we did some about it. Maybe not. He enough. starts with cigarettes. You're going to talk about guns. We have the ATF. The ATF. Nothing yeah. here. <laughs> We got the ATF. Yeah, they're doing a lot to stop school shootings, aren't they, Lindsay? There's not a damn thing anybody can do about it. You can't be sued. Now, Senator Blumenthal and Blackburn, who've been like the dynamic duo here, have found emails from your company where they warned you about this stuff, and you decided not to hire 45 people that could do a better job of policing this. So the bottom line is you can't be sued. You should be. And these emails would be great for punitive damages. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go any further on that, but I want to show you what this reminded me of, because it reminded me of in the 80s when they had hearings with heavy metal bands to try and censor heavy metal bands and, uh, and just take a quick trip down Ooh, memory lane. Use me. words and... To the American public, they invade the privacy of the homes, and we do know under... The law of pornography, the children are given a special protection. I want everyone to know I'm keeping that foremost in mind and asking the best of constitutional minds if there's some way in the world to try to limit it as we go along with the voluntary labeling. How can we censor this? I commend those. So this is when they did the parental advisory labels, and he's talking about the voluntary labeling. Voluntarily, he's like, I'm, "I wonder if there's some constitutional way that we can censor these people." Getting to label, that's what we would like to have truth in labeling. I don't think we can outlaw pornography. Don't have that in mind at all. But to take six, I will give him credit for that at least. He's not trying to outlaw pornography. To seven hours, that's the average listening time, Senator, as I understand by the youngsters of this particular rock pawn and, and, and rock music I'm not and everything spend else a lot of that kind. I promise. Or let's say rock music and intersperse it with the pornography it is, an, is a matter of national concern. And uh, it's something that we've got to give some kind of attention to within the constrictions of free speech. So I'll be looking from this senator standpoint, not just to bring pressures, but to try to see if there is some constitutional provisions, attacks, or approach that can be used on the Congress to limit this outrageous filth, uh, su violence, suggestions, suicide, and everything else in the Lord's world that uh, you wouldn't think of, or certainly the writers and framers of our First Amendment never have perhaps heard in their time, never considered. So he doesn't sound that much different from Lindsey Graham, does he? This is very interesting. I happened to cross a clip about this bill, and it's from a very uh, unsuspecting uh, opponent. I don't know if you remember who Taylor Lawrence is, but she's one of these like online reporters who kind of... You know, she's like a tattletale. She's like, I think she like went into a Reddit forum and some guy said the R word and you know, and and she went out and like told everybody that he, he that he did, but he actually didn't. It was someone else. And but I found this clip of Taylor Lawrence kind of breaking down this bill, and she's actually on the right side of it. So watch this. This this really caught me off guard. And Taylor Lawrence, I gotta admit, like she's she's kind of hot too. So there's also that. But 
she's in the right frame of mind here. Listen to this. This this really impressed me. Protecting LGBTQ youth and free speech and free expression on the internet. There's a really shocking piece of legislation in Congress right now that you should know about. It's called the Kids Online Safety Act, or COSA for short. But don't let the name fool you. So that's that's from the website that I just showed you that they're running ads According for. to experts on LGBTQ rights, free speech, and child safety, this bill would do the opposite of protecting kids. Today, the CEOs of Meta, TikTok, X, Discord, and Snap were hauled in front of Congress by supporters of this act. The hearing went atrociously. Senator Lindsey Graham claimed that TikTok is basically being used to destroy Israel, and Senator Tom <laughs> Cotton kept asking TikTok's Singaporean CEO if he was Chinese. And Lindsey Graham was saying that TikTok's being used to destroy it. That's hilarious. What a what a what a scoundrel. Lindsey Graham, you're a scoundrel. That's what I would call him because it said like, oh, I do declare, Lindsey, you're such a scoundrel. I think I did a, like a British voice there first. That was like a pirate voice, but I was trying to do my southern voice. Say, oh, I do declare, Lindsey, you are you are such a scoundrel of a man. And this is all following earlier comments by Senator Marsha Blackburn, where she claims the Kids Online Safety Act would help protect children from the transgender in this culture. She also claimed that social media is where children are being. This is why there's bipartisan support for it. On the Democrat side, it's censorship. They can they they can use this to go like, oh, that guy, that guy who uh, who was criticized, who's saying free Palestine was criticizing Israel and is being anti-Semitic. So we had to block him because it was dangerous to kids. Doctrinated seemingly into LGBT life. And though these lawmakers claim that COSA is about protecting kids, a lot of experts say that it would actually isolate and endanger them. The bill could cut kids off from crucial information online about basically any controversial topic, like abortion, gender affirming care, substance abuse, and even information about current events. It could Gender affirming care. That's, I mean, listen, there are people who are, have a problem with that. I think I'm on the side of when you're 18, it's cool, but people should be able to read about it. They should be able to look it up online. Kids should be able to look it up, even if their parents are conservative and don't like it. Also lead to anybody using a social media platform to be required to give a government ID, which has terrifying implications for free speech. Evan. There you go. Now. I don't know when this occurred, but I'm very happy that these people have finally woken up to the reality of what's going on here. Greer, director of Fight for the Future, a human rights advocacy group, said that people have been using the idea of protecting children to justify authoritarian policies that actually hurt yes. children for decades. COSA yeah. is not a privacy bill, she said. It's a censorship bill. Remember. More than 100 human rights organizations and LGBTQ advocacy groups have condemned the bill, saying that it would endanger minors, especially LGBTQ youth. First it gives me hope that people like Taylor Lawrence are coming around to the reality that censorship is not going to help anything regardless of what your political leanings are.